Hello guys, Craig Frost here for a Juicy Touch tutorial here in Photoshop. Now this tutorial we're going to make a cool kind of graphic that you could use for a desktop background or some sort of picture and it's on screen now as you can see. Now I have a picture which is actually my uh, desktop background which I took last year down the common where there was a a little river, some ducks and this thing. Um, anyway, I've put it in this kind of sphere background thing which looks kind of cool. And you could do this with anything, a picture of someone, you could have someone's face in here and I'll show you um, how I created this. So if I just close this up and we'll try and get to this kind of same stage again. Okay, here we go. So I'll open a new uh, project and I want this to be 1000 pixels by 1000. It doesn't have to be a thousand, but it does have to be a square. So your height and width have to be the same. And we'll say 300 pixels per square inch. That should be fine. Okay, so here we are. Here is our box that we've got. Um, so over here, I'm going to select my foreground color to black. You can do that. We'll just press D on the uh, keyboard. And now I'm going to fill it with my. Um, with my black color. Okay, um, now this is where we start to make our sphere and it has to be a square otherwise your sphere will come out oval and I kind of want to work quick here um, so the video isn't too long because I'm working on the idea that you can pause the video whenever you need to. So here we go. So we'll come down to render oh my god can you hear how heavy the rain is against my window. Anyway, render clouds. Here we go. We've got some clouds in here now. Now we're going to come up to filter again and we're going to go to render lens flare. This just give us a little bit of a shine on our um, on our sphere. We'll make it a bit brighter. There we go. Have it going diagonally. I found that works kind of best. Now we're going to go to filter, distort and something called polar coordinates. And instead of rectangular to polar, we want polar to rectangular. This is first of all going to stretch it all weirdly like this. Then you just come to image, rotate the image 180 degrees so it's upside down. And I'm not quite sure why this works, but it works. Polar coordinates, now press rectangular to polar. And OK. And there you have it. We've already got this sphere that's been made. OK. Now I'm going to come up to the marquee tool and select from the center. I'm going to hold down shift and alt and then click out from the center and it will form a perfect circle and you can cut off the sphere where you want. I want it just in a bit because I'm not keen on the light bit at the top. Release then press Control J on a Windows or Command J on a Mac like I am and uh, it will duplicate it to its separate layer here Okay, now what we can do is we can come up to uh, image, canvas size, and we can stretch our canvas to what we want. So if we were going to make a desktop background, for example, we could do 1920 by 1080. And there we have it. Although I think my um, original example was 2000 pixels by 1500 pixels. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Right, we need to get a move on. So we're going to make a new layer. This is going to be our background layer. So I want to choose a color. So I'm going to choose a nice kind of skyish blue color. And then I'm going to fill my um, my background layer. Sorry. So you come down to fill, foreground color, and press that. Or you can go shift and backspace, which is what I did earlier. Now on this layer, I'm going to come up to filter, render, and we're going to put some clouds in there again. This is just to make a cool background. So I'm going to use that same polar coordinates to rectangular. and make some nice kind of background. You can do it even again. Um, here we go. Anyway, that's fine. So we'll now drag that below our sphere layer. Now on this sphere layer, I want it to kind of match the color. So we'll come up to adjustments, color balance. My room's suddenly gone so dark in here. The, there's a storm outside. Okay, so I'm going to slide some blues up. 
just work on the mid and tone channel, it's fine. I don't want it to completely match the background. I want it to be slightly more purpley. So there we go. It just helps it stand out a bit. Okay. Now, uh, you can even use the uh, burn tool and add some shading. Uh, just a few clicks down here. Remember the light's coming up from the top here, so the shadow will be bottom left. And then you can use the dodge tool for the same up here to add some. Oh, I'm sorry about the rain. This microphone's really picking it up. Okay. My god. No doubt we'll have lightning soon. Okay, so now I'm going to double click this layer and come into inner glow and change this to a light blue. That's fine. And then just increase the size a little bit. That just helps wrap it around and makes it look a bit more 3D. And we'll do the same with outer glow. Oh, my phone. Let me move that away. Okay, so we've selected the same kind of color and just outer glow a bit. Okay, there we have it. We have a nice sphere now. Now we want to place our picture inside there. So I have, if I come down to Finder, I have a picture on the desktop, which I just want to drag in. Okay, and we can we, uh, we can resize that, but I'm just going to press a return key. And then we want to make sure we rasterize the layer. Sorry if I'm going a bit quick. Uh, then use the same circular marquee, elliptical marquee tool. Shift Alt and drag out from where you want the focus to be. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size as the sphere. And then press Control Shift I to invert the selection and then backspace to delete the selection. Oh, what did I do there? Anyway, <laughs> so now you can drag that over. I think actually I've still got a bit down the side here which wasn't um, completely deleted. Let me just get rid of that. So I'm kind of rushing now because I don't want this video to be really long. So, oh, my phone. Sorry about that. I think the network must be struggling with this storm. Okay. So now um, we're going to grab a layer mask down here in the bottom right and grab a paintbrush and make sure the foreground color is black and the brush is really soft. And then just um, start painting around the edge of this just to blend it in a little bit. Maybe that's a bit too big brush. And if you mess up a selection, like if I accidentally rubbed out a bit too much, just press X to bring white to your foreground color and then paint it back in like so. Okay, so we've kind of blended that in um, nicely now. You can spend more time on this. And then remember, if it's a picture of someone's face, you can make sure their face is in. And you can drop the opacity a little bit to show a bit of the background through. You get the idea. So we've come this far. Now I'm going to hold Control uh, Command down. That'll be Control on Windows. And press Command E or Control E on the Windows to merge these layers together. So what I'm going to do now is... Um, duplicate it. So Command J and that's going to be the same throughout this. We're going to duplicate a few times. So now I'm going to re just resize it. Oh my god! This tutorial is not going well. Just resize it. Place it somewhere else. Uh, we're going to run a blur on it. A Gaussian blur. That'll do. And then just drag it behind the layer duplicate that same layer, drag it somewhere else, you can resize it again, you can change the blur if you need to. Anyway, you've now got the idea of how I came up with the image that I showed you to begin with. Drag this down, you can just experiment with all this. And maybe one down here. Anyway, there you go. That's the basic idea. Now, just below this front layer, I'm going to insert an adjustment layer 
hue and saturation and just desaturate the background slightly, you can go all the way, but just slightly and change the hue of it a bit more purpley to make the foreground stand out. Not too far. And there you go. That's probably still too far. Experiment with this. Um, you can find all new effects with this kind of sphere idea. Uh, it's a nice neat little trick. I'm still not sure how it works or why it works, but I know that it works. And it looks cool. And I think you should definitely try it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Remember to follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash juicy touch. Rate, comment and subscribe. I hope you like this video. It's turned out to be quite a long one, but I hope it's useful. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you. In, oh, well, I might not ever see you, but on the internet, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.